Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. In today's episode, we strip it back to the Knowlton Brothers bread and butter LinkedIn ads. So if you're interested in LinkedIn ads, well, also, if you're not currently interested in LinkedIn ads, but you have any sort of responsibility in marketing your own business or your employer's business or whatever, I think it will be really useful for you to listen to. Lloyd explains why LinkedIn is the superior social media platform for leveling up your business. If you do things right, like you said, because people are there in the mindset to do business, that's why it's a good place to be and a good place to invest. Like, I think it would be very unlikely that someone on Instagram or Facebook is in the mindset to do a million pound deal. And Dan gives the inside scoop on how to psychologically outsmart your target audience with the power of rewording. You need to think like the customer, like you wouldn't want to call it a sales call because then it's making people think, oh, a call where you're going to try and sell to me. No thanks. Whereas it could be like book a review session or book a, an insights chat or, you know. Hot off the back of securing a £1 million contract for a recent B2B client, it goes without saying that the boys have a proven track record when it comes to LinkedIn. And I'm not just saying that because they pay my wages. You really are about to get some valuable tips from two of the leading professionals in their field. You lucky anchors. This is episode 116 of the Business Anchors Podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. So Lloyd, how did we use LinkedIn ads to generate a £1 million contract for a B2B client recently? Well, Dan... I'm going to talk about that today. <laughs> it's the classic formula of a business hackers podcast. Yeah. Um, there's loads of things that uh, to consider to go into a successful LinkedIn ad campaign. And we're finding it's more and well, it's basically more and more useful as a business tool. Um, but yeah, there's loads of different things that go into it. And we're, I'm not saying at the end of this, you're just going to go away and get a million pound contract because that would be the sort of thing that those gurus say to you mm. and then they just take your money. But I'm not going to take any of your money. I'm just going to help you get closer to that than you currently are if you're interested. Yeah, because we've learned a lot in our journey with LinkedIn ads. Yeah. And I guess we've actually done an episode. So episode 102, which is titled How to Generate B2B Leads from Senior Decision Makers, that is focused more on the content and creative side of running ads that work. And we had a chat recently and because of these, this great, these great results we've achieved for this client, we wanted to talk more on the kind of ad side. So if you're interested in LinkedIn ads, which I'm sure all of you are. Well, also, if you're not currently interested in LinkedIn ads, but you have any sort of responsibility in marketing your own business or your employer's business or whatever, I think it will be really useful for you to listen to. Even if you don't go down this route, I think there's some things you could take for lots of aspects of marketing, some takeaways. Yeah. Basically, listen, no matter who you are. (laughs) All right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, oh god <laughs> really niching down yeah. if yeah. you've got ears listen yeah basically um so I guess, I guess to start with for those mm. who may be listening and sort of have heard of linkedin ads but don't really get it like mm. what's our take on linkedin ads or like if um, someone's like what what are linkedin well, ads previously so any social ads it's basically paying to get your whatever content you want in front of your potential audience or your potential customers, whatever. Um, so that's a very basic level. <laughs> it's that on LinkedIn. Um, but previously, Facebook um, ads have been very popular in business over the years. As you probably know, um, Facebook and Instagram um, have been known to be very good value and they've grown thousands of businesses crazily through those kind of ads. Um, the value of those ads is uh, diminishing and has been over time um, because it's kind of a saturated market. Facebook or Meta are at a point where they've kind of got too many uh, people wanting to advertise for the amount of eyes they've got on the platform, which is a great place to be. But that means kind of things have changed. And we found recently in our business through various client projects that Ads on TikTok and ads on LinkedIn are quite often a really good tool to get the results for our business. So we're going to obviously talk about LinkedIn ads today. And especially we're focusing this episode on LinkedIn. If you work in B2B, if you're a B2B business, this is going to be really useful to you because LinkedIn as a whole is a B2B platform mainly. Mm -hmm. There's like lots of senior decision makers there who are going on the platform 
it, doing sorry in a mindset to do business compared to other platforms like TikTok, where it's more focused on consuming entertaining fun content mm -hmm. people are on linkedin in a business mindset and yeah. we generate most of our revenue from linkedin and i think most um most people have this kind of thought of linkedin as as exp it's expensive to advertise on mm. that's been a thing over the years people have mm. been thinking that and in a way it is <laughs> but i think hopefully from this episode you can understand in our experience that if you do yeah. things right like you said because people are there in the mindset to do business that's why it's a good place to be and a good place to invest like i <laughs> think it would be very unlikely that someone on instagram or facebook um is in the mindset to do a million pound deal yeah whereas we've managed to do that on linkedin for one of our clients yeah and um and that's that's why i think the difference is and that's why yes you will pay a little bit more but you're obviously paying for what you're potentially getting i think sense. i think you're exactly right the point is um expensive inverted commas is subjective mm -hmm. so yes it may be more expensive to per click or per thousand views with your ads on LinkedIn. But if you think about the fact that you're getting in front of senior decision makers who have big budgets that they want to spend compared to people on Facebook that might not be in that mindset and aren't spending as much time there, yeah. then LinkedIn yeah. is a really good platform. And the CPMs, so I, um, I've got it on my notes where I found it. There's a really popular like LinkedIn ads um, newsletter uh can't find on my notes where it is but anyway they sort of have said that in 2022 the average cpm uh, sorry the average cost per click mm. is uh, between eight and twenty dollars which to me did sound very expensive but that's not the anywhere near the cost per click we find in our mm. um in our campaign so i guess even though it sounds expensive we uh we're looking at like a three pound cost per click yeah. compared to that eight to twenty dollar which would what be like between five and 18 quid or something mm. so if you do the right things actually it's nowhere near that expensive as well so don't get scared by those prices because if if you kind of follow the sort of advice we give today you can pay less than half of that you know a third or a quarter of that i also do think you, it's important to understand you need to have an an all right average lifetime value of of the kind of clients that you're trying to generate mm -hmm. or what you're selling. Like if you were just selling like low value products, it LinkedIn probably isn't the place to do that because mm -hmm. it, it, it's more expensive to acquire those, those yeah, customers. Yeah. However, if you've, if you've got a customer that's spending a bit of money, it's worth spending yeah. that extra amount of money to acquire them because the return you're getting is, is much greater yeah. than selling. Like, that's the thing. I think the, the potential opportunity with LinkedIn ads increases the higher value your product or services normally services but yeah. um yeah you know not many products cost a million pounds so you're not going to sell a million <laughs> pound shoe on <laughs> linkedin and get that great return but if your if your business has scaled to a significant point where it can deliver these things um mm. at that scale so i think that for the listeners i think there's going to be a, a <coughs> listeners a lot of our listeners are marketers or business owners i think there's going to be uh, a variety of levels of understanding of like LinkedIn ads manager and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I guess for, for people who either haven't used it before or are considering using LinkedIn ads, yeah. how easy is the, is the LinkedIn ads manager to navigate? Like if you were to put your shell, yourselves in the shoes of someone who maybe hasn't used it before, yeah. does it look mental or does it, is no, it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> like yeah. if you've got a base knowledge of marketing, um, you'll over time, you'll understand it. And mm. I think, anyone even if you know you're thinking oh i might outsource this or whatever i think it's a good idea to kind of have a look at what the platform's like and the capabilities and and that kind of thing but yeah if you if you have the time i think it's simple enough that you can get to know how to use it and that's how you know how i did it and how people in our team did it we haven't had formal training where we went to a course for a month and then learned how to use it it's and there's good guides on linkedin and that kind of thing um saying that you know if you're if you're not kind of in a small business where you're doing everything i would say if you can afford it get someone like us or, or someone that does this for a living to do it for you because mm. it's you're more likely to get a better return but yeah if you if you don't have that kind of budget or you want to do a small kind of test based on the sort of advice we're giving then it's definitely a platform you can get to grips with quite quickly and linkedin have really good guides on their website so 
basically you can Google if you're thinking like, oh, how do I set up an audience like this? Mm. You just Google it and they've got great guides you can follow as well. So yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely not a complicated platform. Okay, cool. And so if if people are listening thinking, great, it sounds all right. I'm in B2B. I'm selling a product that's got all right value. What What's the starting point? Like, where do you start with all this? I would say start completely away from the platform uh, as, a, as a starting point. Okay. Um, away from being on LinkedIn, on paper, or however you you best kind of make notes or plans and that kind of thing. You really want to scribble down a kind of a customer journey. Mm. You know, what do, what do the people that you're trying to sell to need to know and to see to eventually become a customer of yours? I think this is far better scribbling it away and just making notes and kind of trying to brainstorm than actually doing it in the LinkedIn, pla- you know, putting a campaign together on the LinkedIn ads platform. Yeah. I think this is, a, a, yeah, definitely the best way to start. I remember when when I started to explore the platform a few years ago, mm-hmm. I went down a number of rabbit holes where I was like, I'm going to set up a campaign. And yeah. I just started to set stuff up yeah. without actually doing that first part of actually coming up with a bit of a strategy of like, what's our customer mm-hmm. journey? And, and I think have- 90% of B2B LinkedIn ad campaigns fail because people do that. They set a thing up and they, they have set up to sell straight away. Mm-hmm. And if you think... If you want, if you're selling a cheap product, that actually can work. We've had that for a clients previously. B to C, um, you got a cheap product with one ad, you can actually sell. Mm. Someone's got sometimes. a need. They're uh, in. They've on, shown level of interest. Yeah. We've done that sort of thing with Instagram ads and TikTok ads and stuff. But um, with this, if people are making a B to B business decision, could be worth thousands or millions mm. if you're that high end. They're not gonna click on one ad and buy so people set up these campaigns like right we, we've got this thing where we can sell this product let's put an ad mm. or even let's put 10 ads saying we can sell this mm. thing and they're all going to fail because it's a more complex buying decision than that when you're looking mm. at these higher value business decisions i was going to say the b2b customer journey is usually longer and more complex with more people involved than just you know sandra who's looking to buy a new phone case it's exactly. it's a lot it's a much yeah. bigger decision especially when it's like the the example we've shared with our client where you're literally converting a one million pound contract there's a lot more thought process and, and people involved in that process yeah. so i think you're uh, this is a really good tip actually to get away from the platform and map that out at yeah. the start and then really it's we've spoken about this loads of times if you listen to previous episodes but the traditional marketing funnel you're looking at awareness so what do you need to do at the first touch point you need to get people's attention um, and do enough so they remember you, basically. Mm. So you're not selling to them at this point. Don't forget, if you if you offer a service and someone's paying you £10,000 for it, they're not going to buy at that point. Don't try and sell mm. to them. You just need them to get their attention and have it long enough so hopefully they remember you. Mm. That's, that's the goal, basically, at that point. And again, people fail because they try to do more at this stage, yeah. and you don't need to. And in episode 102, which I referenced before, we actually dive into a whole range of different types of video and creative that we produced at that stage that helped overcome problems and educate yeah. and, and that kind of thing yeah. at that stage. So listen to that episode yeah. if you want specific examples. Yeah. And then once, you, once you've once uh, you mapped out awareness, okay, so we got these ideas of how we could get people's attention. That's kind mm-hmm. of who we want to target with this. Consideration, the next stage that you can retarget people with once you know that they know about your business mm-hmm. and who you are, it's what do we need to put in front of people to make them consider working with us still you're not necessarily at the point of selling you're not saying get in touch now um you can start to introduce a bit of that but really it's just what do we need to put in front of them and if you think well they need to know this this thing um wrong Mm -hmm. i would say there's probably 10 to 20 uh kind of different types of messaging that people will probably need i'm not saying every person needs 20 but i would say Some people are motivated by price. Some people are motivated by um, more statistic-led things of, Mm. oh, this helps 80% Mm. of people do this thing. Some people, you need to be heavier on messaging on return on investment. Sometimes it's the quality of the service, the customer service. So think about all those things. What could be important to people? And they're the things that we need to be communicating at that stage. Something that can be really useful is actually speaking to your sales team. Because they're usually the ones that get the objections or the common questions that potential customers are asking so that you can have that data to know, 
what your what your potential customers are thinking and questioning in general and then you can start to produce the creative and copy that mm -hmm. overcomes those objections that answers those questions so again you're like holding the hand of that ideal customer and taking them on that journey yeah. um, to eventually turning into a lead which turns into a customer and once we know that those people are interested they've seen things they need to see and i'll talk about exactly how mm. a bit later and um, then we've got the conversion level the final level which is put something in front of them that they can't say no to basically it's going to be a no-brainer to get in touch with you or to fill out a form or whatever you need them to do to get them uh in front of one of your sales team or in front of you whoever that person is hmm. um and for for the example we're talking about with the million pound lead that was a crazy return on investment um we were uh they were selling, filling out a form to receive a free sample and hmm. then that started the the internal sales process basically and if you're thinking, well, we can't afford to give free samples to everyone, don't worry, you don't need to. Like this, this is the ultimate, the best possible way. It's like a no brain, like, oh, we just get to get a free samples. There's no risk to us. Right, I'm definitely gonna put my details in. Mm. But we showed the awareness ads to over half a million people. Obviously, it's not viable to send free samples to half a mm -hmm. million people. <laughs> but we whittled down with this marketing funnel to make sure at this point, we're only in front of the people that are definitely the people that will potentially buy from you. So it's worth investing that and sending them a sample or mm. what, or investing the time, whatever it may be. And, you know, we've, we've gone through the process to make sure we're only targeting people that have the decision-making capabilities that are in the right industry. Mm. Um, and they've gone through this process of seeing all your content. So they're already convinced that you're the right um, business to buy from. That's why it's worth investing at that point mm. to a much smaller amount of people. I think this is something a lot of businesses miss with the whole funnel and like taking on that journey. I think a lot of companies understand that, yes, you need to build awareness and educate people and mm. demonstrate the problem that you solve. Yes, you then need to build trust. The final part of actually generating these leads of, of, of decision makers who you want to be converting to customers. I don't think people think enough about having a good offer for them mm -hmm. like a lot of people will take that journey and then the final call to action is now buy our product and it's like that that's they could just go on your website for that whereas yeah. like with this specific example sending a free sample pack is like a good like oh i've i've been made aware of this it looks like a good product i trust them i don't even need to pay to have some samples sent so so it is kind of a no-brainer rather than just yeah. Um, and not everyone has to send free stuff, like as a sample. That, that doesn't necessarily work for everyone, but there needs to be something enticing there or, uh, you know, whatever it is. The worst possible thing, which might be appropriate for your business, is get in touch for with one of our sales team or whatever. That will convert a small amount of people that are ready. But what's better than that? Is it giving them, it might be you have software, two month free trial, no risk. Mm. But you know that you're giving that to the most likely people to mm. convert as a customer that's gonna that's worth giving them that trial. Mm. Um, or an audit. Like thinking about if you provide some kind some kind of consultancy or yeah. or training, doing an audit of what they're currently doing, mm. a free audit, so that they're actually getting some kind of value mm. at that point of the or funnel. Or adapting that sales call that it, it is, it, you're trying to get and making sure that the first half of the sales call is something value adding. Mm. So you, your sales team can be giving tips on how they could do certain things that's valuable to them. Obviously, I'm being vague because it could mm. be any business. And then, no, right, then we're in front of them and we do have the opportunity to say, oh, would you like to uh, move forward with this, this and this? I think another point to remember, that's just made me think, is your messaging. And you you sometimes tell me off for this with our marketing because I... I tend to use messaging sometimes that I think in my brain, whereas you need to think like the customer, like you wouldn't want to call it a sales call, hmm. book a sales call with our, with our sales team, because then it's making people think, oh, a call where you're going to try and sell to me. Yeah. No, thanks. Whereas it could be like book a review session hmm. or book a, an insights chat. Or, you I know. see this all the time where people use language you, you, you would use internally in your business for potential customers and it makes absolutely no sense don't invite people to a sales call <laughs> that, like, that sounds, sounds so that crap sounds so shit <laughs> and and you know you can be transparent and honest with this as well that like invite them to a whatever it is that sounds good hmm. and and make sure that they do get value from it don't invite them to to 
a birthday party and then it's a sales call. <laughs> but at the same time, you can invite them to a training session and you know that at the end you're going to mm. kind of be like, so would you be interested in working with us on this or or not? Make sure they get the value. Don't mm. just lie to them. But there's ways you can do it that yeah. make you much more likely to, to have a successful outcome. I think managing expectations is key. Mm. You never, and I've seen this before, like you never want to just completely lie and then yeah. it turns out to be a sales call because then you're yeah you're definitely. you're starting that relationship at a point of them just being pissed off at you yeah um so there's there's definitely a balance you've got to go with that uh, go on. sorry i was gonna say so now now that you're you've scribbled this whole process mm. um and you're off the platform now it's time to actually get into the linkedin ads, ads platform and start thinking about audiences and this sounds really fun oh yeah <laughs> audiences on the linkedin ads platform um i i I'm going to say keep this simple, um, So, especially if it's the first time. And, and we kept it this simple for the client we're talking about and a number of clients. Mm. Create a narrow and a broad audience. Uh, mm. Sometimes in different industries and different products, either one can work. So a broad audience, say your, your service is in construction, set up a really simple audience to construction, make it really wide and let the platform do the work mm. and find the best people. That's one test, and that's a really simple audience to put out there. Mm. Then go really narrow and actually give the LinkedIn ads platform all of the information you think from what you know is the perfect person. So you're using the LinkedIn ads platform to put job titles in. You're going to exclude certain job titles that won't be the right person. You're not going to just say construction. You're going to say a construction company that's this size and you want to get in front of someone at this uh seniority is that the word yeah I yeah, so, yeah. you can do that within the platform and that audience is going to be much smaller but from your knowledge of your business or the business you're working for um you think that that's the perfect audience and in my experience sometimes you're right <laughs> and that will perform better but other times actually the platform can do the work for you and you'll get a bet uh, better better results from the broad audience mm. so that's your first or two audiences to set up and you're going to show your awareness content to those people. Mm. I think we've seen over the years, like ads platforms are getting smarter. Yeah. This is why we did an episode on this a while ago, but this is why as an agency, we're really focusing on the creative element mm -hmm. and standing out in that way because we've predicted this in the past, but eventually you will just click a button and the algorithm previously, will do all the work. Previously, I would have never said just test an audience just to everyone in construction. Mm. That would have been so expensive and shit mm. years back because the platforms weren't clever enough to ever get the best result mm. there you had to give it all the information now sometimes that genuinely is mm. the way to go yeah um tip yeah go on tip here um even with the broad audience exclude job roles in sales so business development and sales job roles just because you are paying to get this in front of people um and you don't want to be paying to get your ads in front of people that are on LinkedIn trying to sell to you. Mm, interesting. Um, I found that this, you know, it's all these small things that have actually in the end a big effect on the return you get. Yeah. If you're spending, and I've seen this in some campaigns, 30% mm. of your budget on people that are in sales roles that mm. you're thinking you're going to sell to them actually there on LinkedIn yeah. trying to sell to everyone else. Um, that's like a third of your budget gone. I guess unless... You've got some product that's for salespeople, <laughs> unless it's like, which yeah. I know that's a devil's advocate yeah. thing, but yeah, unless, but yeah, that's, that's a really interesting point. Cause I guess, yeah, you want to be getting the most from your money. So any mm. small, any of these small details that you can yeah. input to avoid showing ads to people that really aren't likely yeah. to, to buy. Is also worth on the platform in the audience section, as you're putting the audience together, there's a, um, like a bar on the right that t tells you percentages of how your audience is currently made up mm. and that's where for some clients we spot before we exclude them it's like oh wow we've we've actually gone quite narrow here but like 15 percent are still business development job mm. roles um so basically get rid of those yeah. you, if you think there you are you are saving 15 percent of your budget mm. that's and with these ads the ideal result is they work and you scale them yeah so that 15 percent that could be shit loads of money. Yeah. Um, and that could be the difference between success and mm. failure. You know, you're doing an experiment. You're like, oh, it's not quite right. If you make these small changes, it's like, actually, mm. this does give a really positive return and we want to carry on and it's going to help us grow. So we've set up the broad and yeah. the narrow yes. audience. Yeah. <laughs>
What's next? Our mission now is uh, to not show, pay to show our ad to anyone who doesn't give a shit. <laughs> okay, that, that sounds is, like a good that's got to be your mission at this point. So you've got people, uh, got it to these people that you're testing that you don't know if they give a shit yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got it out there. One of them, like I said, is quite a broad audience. Loads of people that probably don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. But um, at this point, we remarket to people most of the time. Uh, people have watched at least 25% of those videos we remarket to. If they're watching any less of that, they clearly don't give mm. a shit at all. Um, so we don't want to pay to get in front of them again. They've already told you by scrolling by mm. probably three times because they're part of that awareness audience that they're not bothered. We don't want to spend any more money on those people. I think this is really important. Understanding the data points that exclude people that you don't want to show any more ads to. Because again, it's that thing of getting the most from our, from our money. We want this funnel to keep binning off mm. people who aren't showing any level of interest. So eventually you've got that bucket of people that are really have a high yeah. intent and need for what you a offer. A lot of marketers and agencies, one of the key metrics, they're like, we've got in front of this many people. Look at that. That's amazing. And I'm saying... You actually, for most of the campaign, you want to reduce that number. Mm. You want to not get in front of loads of people. You mm -hmm. want to get into a, in front of a small amount of people who are right. Mm. And I think that's where another place where a lot of people fail and a lot of bad advice is given. Yeah. Like at this consideration stage, we don't want to have metrics of like, we're trying to get in front of as many people as we yeah. can with this message. Millions of people. It's yeah. like that cost shit loads. We're trying to cut. We, we don't want to pay for anyone that's not going to be a potential customer. Mm. And obviously we don't fully know that yet, but we're getting a better idea. Yeah. Um, and then the next stage, at the conversion stage, we go even further. At the moment, obviously, we're changing strategies all the time. Yeah. But most of the time, if people haven't watched more than 50% of the videos in the consideration stage, mm. then they're getting cut as well. Yeah. So that's like an even more harsh thing of, okay, you've got to be watching at least half of these videos. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not interested enough for mm. us. Um. So yeah, you want to cut out anyone. So at the awareness stage, hopefully you've cut out people in the audience that don't have the budget, aren't in a big enough company, whatever you've done with your targeting. Mm. And then here we're like, if you're not paying attention and this messaging mm. or this product isn't right for you, we never mm. want to pay to get in front of you again. Yeah. Interesting. And then so so the, the you're then left with the really key people who are interested and a percentage of those will fill out. I guess it depends how you, there's lots of ways to set ads campaigns up and things, yeah. but this sort of generic route, yeah. potentially filling out a lead form, yeah. a percentage of those will fill that out. Well, that's, then... that's another thing, understanding that not everyone is the same. So something we've had success with is at the consideration stage, linking to uh, a form on the website. So if people are ready to, we're not, mm. we don't normally go with a call to action of click this link, but mm. it's there mm. if they want it. Um, that gives them the ability to look at your website and then fill in your form there. Mm. But at the conversion level, we uh, usually work on a LinkedIn lead form within the platform. Mm. So some people want to do the research, look at your website before they get in touch with you, all that stuff. Some people already have the information they need and the LinkedIn lead ad form is already pre-filled in. So it's like two mm. clicks to basically say, yeah, like I want to, I want to request a free sample, and I want to talk to someone yeah. about this. So again, that's that's testing two different methods and giving mm. people the opportunity to to be who they want to be. I think an added tip that we've mentioned in the past is to ensure you've got your ecosystem set up effectively as well. And what I mean by that is this episode is just about LinkedIn ads and you know using LinkedIn ads to drive new business, but usually a customer journey isn't as simple as just seeing an awareness ad, seeing a consideration ad, becoming yeah. a lead. There's a whole range of other things going on in that customer journey and marketing touch points that a load of them aren't trackable. Um, some of them are, but um, it's important to have all those, other, like on your website, having all, making sure it's optimized um, so that it loads quickly, making sure you've got case studies and testimonials there, making sure you've got, you're active on other social platforms where these people are searching for information so they can see that you're legit. But there's all these other things you want surrounding this campaign that we haven't yeah. like mentioned yet, um, yeah. which is really important. Yeah. We spoke about that in the episode about creative. We spoke a lot about that mm. ecosystem and things and making sure that messaging is there. But um at the at these stages of the funnel especially the consideration stage we want to be have as much variety in messaging as we can and then test those to make sure that mm. we're we know what's working best so i would say at each of these stages you want to be depending on your budget mm. 
you want to be testing sort of two to six ads at least each of those stages at a time and if you have the budget where you've created 20 ads at each level basically mm -hmm. you just want to cycle through those so say you've decided that you're testing three at a time you run the campaign two weeks later you look at it okay in the consideration stage uh these two are performing much better than that third one let's turn that off bring another mm -hmm. one in test that against it and you gradually weed out the low performers the messaging that mm. isn't converting as many people and you test more until you get the ultimate i was going to try and say i was trying to put myself in the shoes of the listeners they might be thinking what mm. are we what are we looking out for to see if it's working or not when you're comparing those ads in the back end because there's loads of data that you can look at yeah. isn't there yeah like click through rates and yeah that kind of things but so well i would if, if you're looking at video i would look at watch time percentage is that showing that they've got yeah if they're watching it for an average of 90 percent that messaging has keep has got their attention is keeping them interested mm -hmm. so there's something there um but also um co cost per click and click through rate if you are linking out mm -hmm. at that point um basically it'll be it'll be cheaper cost per click if the platform is seeing that the people it's getting in front of actually want to see it yeah so so that's telling getting, you that that's a good piece of creative because exactly. they're, they're letting you not only is it going to be cheaper but you know it's cheaper because people actually mm -hmm. like this and are clicking it so yeah. linkedin's going oh this is actually decent content yeah. for this audience so let's let's lower the price basically another another little tip as well that we found with our own linkedin campaign is you can actually test creative organically or in other places before putting into the linkedin campaign yeah so you can get start to get a response to see organically when i posted this on my profile that video with that kind of messaging got that response and that one yeah and then you can kind of whittle down yeah. from all the piece of creative you have to to test different videos in your campaign yeah so what other any other tips or advice thinking listeners might be wondering well, to, if to optimize these campaigns make sure you get the best results possible the, the one theme I've already spoken about, don't show your ads to people who don't care. So this is the like the fundamental thing that people often try uh, LinkedIn ads or other social ads or PPC or whatever, and they give up because it's like, oh, this is expensive, we're not getting the return. Mm. But you're, you're not kind of whittling down people and you're paying to show ads to so many people that it's never going to give you a good return. Mm. You're basically not doing the work. So you're going, I'm just going to pay money <laughs> and hope this works oh no it hasn't and then people give up so mm. the steps i've said previously about not showing your ads to people mm. who don't give a shit mm. um and that, that conversion content that sales content mm. only show them once you know they're the right person only pay mm. to try to sell to them once you know they're the right person because i've pers i've personally been put off sometimes when companies haven't got that right and it's they're a new company to me and they're suddenly in my feed with like sign up to this thing or like when you yeah. get paid in mails and stuff people are like would you like this tool that i'm like i have no idea who you are yeah. there's no trust being built so it's just a very expensive way to get like mm. people will get customers from that but it's a hugely expensive mm. because it's a numbers game whereas with this we're saying like people think linkedin ads can be expensive but mm. if you do the right things you get an a brilliant return on it um you just need to actually do these things basically. yeah i think this logical approach is really important as well we talk about this a lot with marketing i think marketers and we've been guilty guilty of this before do overcomplicate things if you look at this logically like your points around actually showing ads to the people who are demonstrating an interest at each of those different stages you're gonna save money because you're not gonna be paying to show ads to people who haven't shown that level of interest yeah. so yeah. think logically with your marketing yeah. so three common mistakes to avoid mm -hmm. we've already spoken about two of them i think selling too early for high value services we've said if you're b2b and you're selling something worth thousands or millions it's ridiculous to think someone's going to see one ad and go oh yeah i'm going to buy that <laughs> stop doing that um paying to show your ads to people who don't give a shit we've gone over the reasons for that and mm -hmm. the third one is uh something i haven't discussed yet setting up a campaign and thinking the work's done so you, uh, you, we have spoken about how you set up the campaign and use our knowledge and these tactics to try and get to the best possible point. But again, if you stop there, you'll probably give up mm -hmm. because it's very rare. Well, uh, not very rare. Okay, it's rare that we set up a campaign for a client and it works incredibly well from the first week. Mm. Sometimes it does, and that's like wicked. We have <laughs> smashed it here. But most of the time, it's you're kind of halfway there, and then you're like. 
oh hang on no this messaging isn't really converting that we thought would let's mm. let's uh, swap it out for this other messaging oh hang on this narrow audience isn't converting at all actually let's get rid of that and focus on this audience and then all of these changes you're optimizing the campaign you're cutting out paying for people that don't care you're mm. only paying for the people that do care they're seeing content that is better therefore it's cheaper because linkedin says oh it's better so we're going to charge you less mm. and all of these changes gradually mean you're going to get a far better return on investment so understand it's a process and you you basically can always work on making it cheaper to get in front of your customers get the leads mm. sales so it's not like a set it up and leave it yeah and if if, if anchors are listening to this and they're convinced they want to use linkedin ads and it's really great but they don't want to do it themselves do yeah. you know of any companies that could like help them oh um actually i do know of, i know of one do you yeah i actually know them quite well right they're named after our surname oh really yeah, okay Nolton. yeah they're pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah obviously we can help people but if if you don't if you're not in the if you don't have the budget to work with an outside mm. agency or whatever try and use these kind of tips and and have a go obviously but if you can afford it i would say whether it's us or someone else it's usually best to invest in someone that does this day in day out because mm. all of these ins you know there's there's lots more insights than we've just said here mm. but you get that from doing it over time so it's hard because a lot of people try things and then it doesn't work so then they never do it again and it's kind of this missed opportunity yeah. um yeah oh i realize there's one more common mistake dan go on then give us a common mistake um, this is a common mistake that actually one of our clients did before. Go on. It's like get, getting cold feet. So mm. this client we're talking about with this million pound contract, if they stopped after a uh, one month, <laughs> they wouldn't have got a good return. Yeah. And then they've got an absolutely mental return. Yeah. In month we, like had, two. we actually had a client last year that invested in the content and everything and then because in the first month they hadn't seen the positive return mm. yet then they stopped it's like, like oh, yeah we're not sure actually we might might stop this yeah and then it's like they paid all the money to put them as in a position to get the results mm. and then right at the time when they could be getting the results they basically said they, they yeah. stopped the opportunity to get the return so thank you, Lloyd, for sharing those LinkedIn ad insights. I think that's really interesting and hopefully anchors enjoy it. I've got one final thing I want to do before we end the episode. Yeah. Um, something a bit interactive or a bit of a challenge for you Ooh, and I. Sounds exciting, Dan. Um, so, you know, there's a company that sponsors the podcast called Adobe Express. Yeah. They're uh, great. Yeah, they're great. Mm. And we've been using Adobe products for years and we don't want to do the normal thing of bang on about how brilliant the tool is and that kind of oh, thing. I just punched the mic. <laughs> cool. Like that. Um, what I thought we could do... To make it a bit more fun, I want to set us a challenge now, a brief challenge. So you'll see on your notes, there's a number of different features for Adobe Express. Mm -hmm. I want to see out of you and I, who can say the most features with one single breath? Okay, I can. I reckon I can. Okay. And on the video, we're probably going to edit how many words we say. I've been doing Wim Hof breathing, you know. Have you? Yeah. You actually breath, have, because you've been work. doing your cold showers. So I had a cold shower this morning, mate. Don't think that helps with the breath. I have actually been thinking of my made, strategy. Made how. me cold anyway. Oh, really? Um, yeah, probably good. So do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, you go first, so then the winner's second. So it's like, wait. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. So ready. This is the, the one breath. How, how long? Oh, one breath. Yeah, I don't need to time it. Okay. <laughs> one breath Adobe Express features. Okay. This. Ready? Then. Yeah, hurry up. Get started by choosing from thousands of beautifully designed templates to inspire and get you started. Quickly remove background, convert JPEG to PNG, videos to GIF, merge a video, change, change video oh, speed and dead. more. Apply your brand to he's your dead. content in just a tap. Collaborate with your colleagues he's through shared him. templates and libraries. Access the entire no diverse royalty-free Adobe stock photo collection created by the world's no best professional in the from within the Express app. Choose from over 20,000 licensed Adobe fonts as well as from our collections of curved type sets, grids and beautiful font pairs. Bring your content sure to life with animations that apply stand out. Photo effects in seconds. Yeah. Just got to be easy bites. I did. <laughs> oh, what happened at the end? You all right? Do you know what? You lose the inability to read when you're doing that. You lose the inability to you read. Lose so the you lose the can read. You, you, you lose the ability the to read. <laughs> you lose the ability to read. It's okay. I got to, to that. Hopefully they've counted it up on the video. Your okay. go? Yeah. Ready? Is that your strategy? Get started. Oh, it's bat everywhere. 
Get, oh, I've lost all my breath. Get started by choosing from thousands of beautifully designed templates to inspire and get you started. Quickly remove a background. Oh, I've, I've really mounted it up. Convert JPEG to PNG videos to get merge a video, change video speed and more. <laughs> Apply your brand to content in just a tap. Collaborate with your colleagues through shared templates and libraries. <laughs> oh, I really mucked that up. I, lo I, I, on the first uh. word, I, um, I spat everywhere <laughs> and then I just, I lost all my breath. <laughs> Oh, I feel quite lightheaded. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're interested in giving Adobe Express a go, click the link in uh, the description. Yeah. And I hope Mate, you enjoyed that. Adobe are going to love that. That was really <laughs> high quality content. <laughs> no worries, Adobe. We got you back. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening to the podcast and we'll see you in your ears next week. Yeah, I'm lightheaded. <laughs>